The real reason Tesla developed the Plaid motor. What is it that turns an electric car to run so fast? And more particularly, what is it that makes the Tesla Model S Plaid the fastest accelerating production car that has ever hit the road? Well, honestly, it's a lot of different factors that all combine together. But at the heart of the Plaid is a trio of very unique electric motors, and to a similar degree, the battery pack. But we already talk a whole lot about batteries on this channel, and we have never taken any time to think about electric motors, specifically the very innovative electric motor designs implemented by Tesla. Which is a shame, because they are really neat. And while there is a lot of high-level engineering going on here that we won't think about explaining because we're not really clever enough to do that, it's actually not too tough to gain a basic understanding of what's going on inside a Tesla motor, even an advanced design like the Plaid. So let's get into it. Inside Tesla's Plaid electric motor. Okay, so now that we've taken into account all of that, we can talk about what makes the Tesla Plaid electric motor so special and unique. There's more to making this car so fast than just having three motors instead of two. If it were that uncomplicated, then everyone would do it. It would also mean that the Rivian R1 with four motors would be the speediest vehicle in the world, but it's not. We know that the defining characteristic of the Plaid design is that the rotor has a carbon sleeve. This is how Tesla describes it on the product website. And during the Plaid launch event at Tesla HQ in 2021, Elon talked about the carbon sleeve technology a lot. Typically, a rotor would just have a steel sleeve around the outside. This is the first one that Elon is aware of how to use carbon composite. So what we have here is actually an amazingly tight wrapping of carbon fiber threads around the outside of the rotor. Imagine the rotor is like a bobbin being spooled up with thread, or a fishing reel even, if that's more familiar to you. And the carbon fiber thread is soaked with epoxy so that it solidifies into a solid mass. Elon states that Tesla does this wrapping process under extreme tension. They actually had to create a new machine that was able to wrap the threads tight enough. And the reason that they do this is because the material of the rotor will shrink in low temperature. But the carbon fiber will not. So the carbon actually has to be compressing the rotor to avert a separation from ever occurring when the rotor contracts. So, why even do this? Just like how the rotor can contract, it can also expand, not only at elevated temperatures, but also under elevated force, such as when the rotor is spinning at 20,000 RPM. The centrifugal force on the rotor would actually cause it to grow outwards. Elon kind of implied that it would even fly apart if it wasn't being held together by the wrap. But the reason that we don't want the rotor to expand is because we want to keep the distance between the rotor and the stator as little as physically possible. Getting back to our own experience playing with magnets, we know that the force of the attraction and repulsion between two magnets gets powerful the closer the magnets are to each other. And that force is what spins the rotor, so maximum force happens when the rotor is as close as possible to the stator. But if we know the rotor is going to expand outwards at maximum power, then we are going to have to broaden the gap between the two to account for that expansion. If the carbon fiber wrap is averting the rotor from expanding though, then we can keep the gap much smaller. And we're thinking about microns here. This is a tiny, tiny measurement, but it makes a difference to squeezing the absolute highest performance out of your motor. This enables the Plaid to continue putting max power down all the way through its range. If you look at the power curve of all previous Model S motors, they start off super powerful, but actually lose power as the speed of the vehicle increases. Plaid does not do this. The Munro Teardown So we can look over to Sandy Munro and his engineering company to get a brief look at what the insides of the Plaid motor actually seems like. These guys have most certainly one of the coolest jobs ever. They just take cars apart all the way down to their base components and look at how they operate. And Sandy has done this teardown procedure with the Model S Plaid. So there are a few very intriguing discoveries that he made. Let's start off with the inverter. This is a component that we didn't discuss about in the basic explanation, but this thing is like the brain of the motor. The inverter handles the flow of electricity into all those magnets, and in doing that, it mostly controls the speed and operation of the motor. What's interesting is that we can actually see that the inverter board inside each of the Model S Plaid motors actually states Model 3 right on it. 
and Sandy goes around demonstrating that every Tesla motor, whether it's the Model 3, Model Y, or Model S Plaid, has the exact same inverter. The housing is the same on each motor, and the circuit board is very nearly similar, with only one important change on the Plaid that we'll get to in a second. So when we talk about Tesla prioritizing efficiency in their production lines, this is what we mean. The same basic component goes into every car. They don't even waste time changing the printing on the board. They all say Model 3. This is the inverter that Tesla created for the Model 3, and they liked it so much that they implemented it into every single motor in the lineup. The small modification to the Plaid inverter board is actually an explosive fuse. This is really cool. The fuse is actually a little bomb that will fire two pushers straight out that will physically break two of the bus connectors that connect the power from the inverter to the motor. So I'm not sure what exactly would lead to fire, but if something catastrophic takes place to a Model S Plaid, this explosive fuse will basically break the electric connection to the motor and make ideally sure that the motors go completely dead in an instant. The only thing between the Plaid motor and rear wheel is a single gearbox, and that is a requirement. Tesla doesn't have a transmission. There is only one set of gear ratio, but you can't just have the motor directly linked to the wheel. There needs to be a gear reduction first. On the Plaid motor, this is actually a different reduction ratio than on the standard Tesla motor in the Model Y. Moreau discovered that the Plaid has a gear ratio of 7.54 to 1, while the Model Y has a gear ratio of 8.996 to 1. It's also intriguing to see that the stator inside the Plaid motor is the exact same component as the one inside the Model 3 and Model Y motor. Again, maximum production efficiency. And on top of that, the permanent magnets utilized inside the Plaid rotor are importantly more powerful than your average electric car motor, even significantly stronger than Tesla's standard motor. So Monroe did a little unofficial practical test, just by measuring how much force was needed to pull a bolt away from the magnet. They did this test using rotor magnets from a BMW i3, a Mustang Mach-E rear motor, a Model Y rear motor, and the Plaid. They discovered that the Plaid needed 151 newtons of force to pull the bolt away, while the Model Y requires 112 newtons, the i3 requires 93 newtons, and the Mach-E just 81 newtons. So the magnets inside the Plaid rotor are nearly twice as strong as the magnets discovered inside the Mustang Mach-E rotor, and they are over a third more powerful than the rear motor in a dual-motor Model Y or Model 3. And that's about as much as my feeble brain can handle for one day. So hopefully a lot of you learn new interesting things from this video today. This is the first time we've really gone into depth with this topic, and it is a complicated one. But I think that knowing these things just makes it even more entertaining to be an electric car enthusiast.